Hello friends and welcome to my new video in which I will tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. So also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is taxing times with Karen. Tales from my customer service career, that is. No, it's probably not the moving company you're thinking of. I work for one that also provides storage services. This company serves the majority of the United States and has a global reach. I specifically work in the Department of Claims and Disputes, which is far enough up the food chain that by the time we finish speaking, you are probably going to be having a rough day. During the peak of our busiest summer ever in July 2020, a triple threat of normal summer rush, a large number of people moving due to COVID job issues, and everyone who normally moved in the few months before our busy season but was unable to do so due to quarantine because they were drowning. This case comes across my desk. To start with, the agent assigned to handle it was clueless, and to top it off, the woman was your stereotypical Karen. It was a pricing dispute, which is usually our most frequent problem after scheduling conflicts because most people don't consider the practicalities of relocating a house larger than 2,000 square feet across the nation. Now, when something reaches my desk, I usually take the time to go through all of the agent notes to see what they have discovered or observed about the account, as well as any correspondence they have with the customer before I get in touch with them or conduct my own investigation. However, due to the sheer volume of new cases that are being received every day, the usual two-week turnaround time for case resolution was taking two weeks, not counting the time it took for an agent to get in touch with me initially. Because I had literally hundreds of new cases every day, I was giving people money that I would normally not give away because I was so busy. Normally, I would do a thorough investigation and more than half of the people I speak with have their claim denied. However, because of how busy we were, I was calling people on my list, starting with the oldest incident and trying to reach a resolution on my initial contact call. Thus, I refer to this as, regarding Karen's pricing dispute that I received two and a half weeks ago, I noticed from her account that she has been calling our regular customer service line every day, demanding to speak with the company's CEO or CFO. I'm not sure why they think they will actually get them. I also noticed from the agent notes that she is claiming there is a price difference between what the document we sent her and what was being billed. Strange but conceivable errors happen. However, when the agent wasn't able to handle her issue immediately and to her satisfaction, she began to use profanity and demands to speak with their manager. Joy, as if my day couldn't get any harder already. She grabs her cell phone. Karen, hi there. Me. Hello, is Karen available today? Karen, speaking? Me. Hello, this is me from X Moving Company calling you regarding, insert reference number here, for your billing on a monitored and recorded line. Karen. Whoa, you guys are so incompetent. Literally, all you do is steal people's money. That it is about time you gave me a call. My God, I was about to send a complaint to the Better Business Bureau. Me. My apologies. As a result of the current situation, which has caused an unprecedented number of people to move, I am calling you today. I noticed that you spoke with insert name of other agent here and that you were unable to resolve the matter. So this was escalated to me. I'm contacting you in an effort to work toward a prompt resolution to this issue. Karen, good to see someone with common sense in your organization at last. So you're calling to reimburse me for all of the money I've spent with you? Me stopping dead in the hopes that I misheard her. Pardon me? Karen, I was going to file a dispute with my bank for the entire three years that I have spent with your company. But my banker informed me that handling such a large claim would require me to close and reopen my entire account, and that handling it through your company would be much simpler as you are the one who is billing me. This astounds me because the woman stored with us for nearly three years before having everything shipped nearly 4,000 miles from her original location. We are discussing billing in the neighborhood of $15,000. We are unquestionably not one of the less expensive services in this industry and clients typically pay the extra due to our stellar reputation. Me. Well, no. I'm calling to discuss the details of your dispute. It appears that you withheld them from the customer service representative and the other claims agent when you spoke with them. This is incorrect, as far as we can tell, as all of your billing corresponds with the order documents we have been providing to your online account per your request. Do you know how people can go from zero to 60 at the drop of a hat? Yes, she mounted her high horse and completed zero, 120 in half the time allotted. I had to remove my headset and hold it at arm's length 
because I could still hear her yelling at me every expletive in the book. One advantage of working from home is that I avoid the humiliation my coworkers would have given me if this had occurred in the office. She appeared to run out of breath or hot air after a few minutes of this, at which point I was able to finally get an edge. Me. Ma'am, it's my responsibility to identify any discrepancies between the invoice and the documents you received. If there are any, I will reimburse you for the difference. In this case, what specific areas are you charging a different amount than what is shown on your bill? This sets her off on another, albeit shorter, rant in which she hurls a jumble of figures at me. Which is a little confusing for me because prior to it clicking, none of the numbers she is giving me are visible on her account. Me. Is this the amount of money that you are seeing as a difference in the long distance move? Karen. You people really need to learn how to listen. That's what I've been saying. Me. And is this the difference that you are noticing with these charges? Karen. In agreement. Me. Well, I see what the issue is. Since taxes account for the difference in all of your billing, the document you have been referring to must be a quote. As you can see from the bold text at the top of the quote, it does not include taxes. Karen. All right, give me my money back. You never disclosed the exact amount or the fact that you were keeping the taxes. Me. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to do that. The official paperwork containing all taxes, fees, and discounts was given to you at the time of order placement, so the amount you were charged was accurate. Karen. Get me someone who can, she said, because I want my money back. You guys are nothing but thieves and... Insert derogatory term. Me. Ma'am, you don't need to use the language you have been using on this call. I hate to tell you that no one in this company can give you a refund because this is not a company policy or charge. Rather, these are charges that come from the state and federal governments. Even though I detest paying taxes just as much as the next person, I advise you to speak with your state senator about those charges if you have any concerns. Karen, I need to talk to your manager because that is unprofessional and unacceptable. Me. Well, that isn't going to happen because, as far as this company is concerned, I am the highest-ranking employee who interacts with customers. I have the last word in any account or dispute that is escalated within the company, and there are only four people in this hierarchy. None of them ever interact with customers. In essence, I'm the manager you've been requesting, and I'm here to tell you that your account will not be refunded. Karen, this is intolerable. I will report you to the BBB and write unfavorable reviews for your company everywhere. Me. All right, but just so you know, any complaints you file with the Better Business Bureau or open social media cases about this will land on my desk in about two weeks because I am the one closing the case, and we both know how far that will get you. Moreover, since all of our calls are recorded, any negative publicity you post on social media can and will be taken down because there is evidence that we have complied with your ridiculous demands. Karen. All right. Since my bank has been my bank for years, they will support me if I simply dispute everything with them. Me. Have a good day and good luck with that. After Karen hangs up, I start writing down everything we discussed on her account and closing her dispute as rejected. I then send emails to our accounting and social media departments, highlighting Karen's name and account and providing a detailed account of what transpired. Without the follow-up I received later, this would not be a satisfying, entitled people story. Following our wonderful July conversation, in early September, I received an email from our accounting department stating that Karen had attempted to dispute it with her bank. When our department contacted them regarding the issue, we sent them all of the supporting documentation for her billing, including the quotation on which she had based her entire argument, which included a bolded disclaimer regarding taxes. She obviously lost that, and as a result, all of her accounts had to be closed and then reopened for what amounted to a humiliation. Hold on! Things get better. I received an email later that month from my social media team. She attempted to file a complaint with the BBB, but it was rejected after we forwarded them a transcript of her conversation with me. She then attempted to criticize the business on social media, but this attempt was also quickly abandoned when the social media team replied, stating something along the lines of taxation was not a reason to make repeated derogatory remarks about a person. Before she deleted it, they had sent me a screen grab of the comments left by other users on her post, which were simply tearing her a new one. I haven't heard anything further about Karen, but our company did blacklist her due to her misbehavior in multiple departments, so I'm relieved that I won't have to deal with her ever again. That's a good story. Good thing she didn't get what she wanted. She played B and got the B prize. I find it particularly funny that people use the BBB as a threat when it is just a paid service. 
It's not a government agency. It's not a non-governmental organization. It's just a business that convinces people that it's legitimate, takes money from other companies, and prevents them from publishing bad things about themselves. But the funniest part was when it turned out that the whole problem was paying taxes, which Karen simply ignored because she didn't know how to read tickets. Karen screams, our hero explains, and we all remain in awe as we watch this epic confrontation. But in the end, reason wins out, and Karen goes down and is left with nothing. I hope you got your fill of entertainment with this, Karen, and your next customers will be a little less dramatic. The next story is Karen pretends to be the owner of my land and my house. My mornings were calm for the longest time. Drinking coffee on my porch, I would observe the world waking up and hear the soft murmur of suburban life. That all changed the day my neighbor, Karen, decided to break up the harmony. Karen was not your typical nosy neighbor, though. She was the type of person who made it her goal to get involved in other people's affairs. But it appeared that she was now focusing on me. It all began a few months ago when Karen started joking around about my property in strange ways. She would walk by with a sneer on her face and say things like, Oh, this house? You know, I'm entitled to part of this land. You'll see in due course that it belongs to me as well. I initially dismissed it as insignificant bluster that you should just brush off. I assumed that her only option was to utter crude comments. But one afternoon, things quickly became worse. There was a persistent knock on my door while I was at home doing some paperwork. Karen was standing there with her arms crossed, seemingly ready to make a demand. When I opened it, she stormed in as if she had the right to waltz into my house before I could even say anything. I said, obstructing her path. Excuse me, how do you think you're getting along? She gave me a confused look, as though I had just posed the silliest question imaginable. I'm here to examine my property, she pushed past me and declared. Uh, that was ridiculously bold. I told her to leave as I gently but firmly grasped her arm to stop her. You're making a big mistake, she said, giving me a glare. This house is on my property, and if you don't want to leave, I'll have you evicted. I was in disbelief. I had all the paperwork, had lived here for years, and had never heard of a property dispute. Which land did she refer to? Furthermore, what right did she have to storm into my house? I firmly led her to the door and locked it behind her because I was running out of patience. That wouldn't be the end of it. I should have known that. Five minutes later, I caught Karen on the phone while standing outside, looking very agitated. Then I heard the words that instantly chilled my blood. She was making a 911 call. It was unbelievable to me. I observed with a sense of theatricality as Karen spoke to the dispatcher, expressing her concern for her safety and informing them that I had denied her access to her own property. A couple of minutes later, two police cars arrived. Fantastic. I told the officers what was going on when they approached my door. Even though they handled things calmly and professionally, they still needed to look into it. Karen, on the other hand, stood there looking smug, certain that she had prevailed. The police questioned me about my proof of house ownership. Fortunately, I had everything I needed in a tidy folder in my home office, so I gave it to them. After roughly 20 minutes of back and forth, they returned with Karen's story completely discredited. It turned out that she had absolutely no claim to the land, and the officers could tell the whole thing was a lie. She wasn't done, though. Oh, no. There was more underhandedness on her part. Karen told me with a smug smile that the homeowners association supported her. She asserted that the HOA was entitled to redistribute land if a majority of votes supported it, citing some obscure clause. You'll be out of here soon enough, she said, staring me in the eye. I have plans for this place, and so does the HOA. Now, I had always considered the HOA to be a minor nuisance, issuing absurd fines for improperly clipped hedges or parking on the street for extended periods of time. But this was insane on a completely new level. And I had to get ahead of it if Karen was working with them in any way. I promptly contacted my attorney, who is an absolute pro in property disputes, incidentally. He told me Karen's claim was completely untrue. But if the HOA was actually involved, he advised we get ready for a bigger confrontation. So that's what we did. Karen intensified her harassment over the next few weeks, attempting to scare me all the time. The HOA was sending me letters alleging that I was breaking a lot of rules, most of which were made up on the spot. I was determined not to give up easily, though. Things became juicy at this point. 
My attorney learned that Karen was not only making up her property claims, but also conspiring with the HOA president. They had been working on it covertly, without informing the other members, but they intended to force a vote that would essentially rezone the land. It was, quite simply, a scam. My attorney, being the astute individual that he is, enlisted the assistance of the remaining homeowners and made the plot public. It turns out that when they learned, the majority of the HOA board was shocked and in the dark. They swiftly voted to end the nonsense and remove Karen's friend from office. The best part, though, Karen was hit with a sizable lawsuit for trespassing, harassing people, and fabricating a police report. Meanwhile, the shady deals they attempted to pull off forced the HOA to undergo a complete overhaul. My mornings are now calm once more. I drink my coffee while sitting on my porch, and every now and then I watch Karen pass by. Humbled, silent, and no longer making any claims to my property. The next story is theft of a bicycle belonging to the company. I sometimes wonder if everyone who claims entitlement is genuinely entitled or if they are also incredibly stupid. Maybe simultaneously for both, since I find it impossible to think otherwise. Background. My girlfriend was visiting her family today, so I was helping them out while I was there. Since they don't live too far from my family's, my girlfriend chose to take the bus, rather than the train, and get off close to where I was so we could spend some time together. We get coffee in the city, and she thought she would ride a public e-bike to get to her train on time. Hey, that e-bike is mine. Yeah, that's right. Nope. Therefore, she grabs her phone, opens the app for an e-bike rental company, and with the help of Google Maps, she quickly finds a bike that is available for rental close to us. I decided to go along and witness this miracle for myself since I was really intrigued by everything. Even though I am aware of how widely used GPS has become, I still find it pretty amazing how businesses are taking advantage of this information to their benefit. And if I may add, to the benefit of the customers. The directions on her phone take us to an e-bike that is clearly available but it's sitting in what looks to be a front yard. Though the gates weren't locked, my girlfriend thought she would double-check. She enters the bike's number into her app, receives a confirmation right away, and the bike is instantly unlocked and ready for her to ride. She then takes that action. A crazy person yells that my girlfriend is stealing his e-bike as she removes the bike. This is not yours. I just rented it through the official app. This is mine now, she says. No, I own it. The other guy responds, you stole it from private property. That's illegal. What's illegal here is you putting this on private property in the first place. My spouse responds, now if you'll excuse me, and we both turn to leave. The man scurries around us, obstructs our way, and yells, I'm going to report you for stealing my bike too right now. You'll be in serious trouble. And sure enough, he makes a call, even setting it to speakerphone. We waited out because my girlfriend says, this I gotta see. The negative reaction. Greetings, someone is robbing my e-bike, exclaims the man. Gee, what customer ID do you have? The bike was somewhere, sir. And could you please tell me its number? Inquires the support woman. W. G said, I'm this involves bike number. And it was in my front yard. Then this B just took it. W. That bike was listed as available to the public five minutes ago, but it's currently being used by an account that doesn't belong to you. In order to avoid pressuring me to take additional action, I ask that you drop the topic. G. No, this bee stole my bike from my yard. This is my bike. I want you to take action immediately. W. All right, sir. As a result of your account being in violation of our terms of service, I have now closed it. Your rental credits will not be refunded because you indirectly harassed another customer. Such behavior is neither tolerated nor encouraged by us. Girlfriend yells at the phone, thank you, and then says, we'll be on our way now in a normal voice once more. She then starts to walk away, and I naturally follow her. The man runs after us and stops us once more, screaming, No! You can't have that bike! The woman on the phone asks, Madam, do you need me to call law enforcement? No, but we may need an ambulance later because if this guy tries to harass me again, then I see no other option but to defend myself. My girlfriend says, as she approaches the man and even shoves him aside, These days, men are always bothering us poor women. She said, and I had to laugh. Who was bothering whom there, really? My girlfriend isn't particularly strong, but she can definitely support her arguments and throw her weight around. Not this beer-bellied guy. Not unless you're armed with a gun or have the same level of martial arts experience as her. I don't see anyone taking her on just like that. At this point, the man appears shocked, and the woman on the phone says, Hello? 
Respected sir, madam, do I have to contact law enforcement to offer more assistance? I'll escalate this situation if I don't hear back from you in 30 seconds. G mumbles, no, it's good. Girlfriend screams, again, thank you. This is the reason I shop at your store. We reply and carry on. Repercussions. The original plan was for GF to take off, but two against one is always better, so we opted to at least stroll down the street and around the corner. However, the guy stopped following and bothering us, so we broke up. She rides her e-bike to the train station in time to catch her train, and I walk over to get on my train, which leaves a little later. You guys, really? I felt sorry for our Ken a little bit. He was sincere in his complaints, even though he was clearly stupid because he called the hotline. And when the chips were down, he gave up. I'm not sure about this, but I think he realized the obvious, sort of. And that's precisely why there are moments when I can't help but wonder, is this entitlement or just plain stupidity? In either case, I hope this serves as a lesson. Avoid trying to take things that are available to the public and pretend that they are your own. Furthermore, in my opinion, entitlement and ignorance should both be punished equally. You have indeed asked an interesting question. I don't know why this man decided that a bike that belongs to a company suddenly became his personal bike. It is interesting to see how a seemingly fragile girl unravels this situation and confirms her right to the bike. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment. See you soon.